Today we're going to talk about how to install the TFT24 version 1.1 on the Big Tree Tech SKR Pro version 1.2. So what I'm talking about is this display. And as you can see, there's a reset button on it, a piezo buzzer, and a potentiometer that you can click to select. Now, there are two different ways to configure this. There's with ribbon cables over here. And then there's also the TFT connection. To load firmware on this, I'll do that in another tutorial. But basically, you can load it either through the SWD or through the... SD card. You may also possibly, but I haven't confirmed, be able to do it through a USB stick as well. There's also a little connector here for power if you want to connect 5 volts of power to it. So what I'm going to do is actually set this up partially for the moment by connecting right here. This is actually the RS-232 connection. So I'm going to place this here and we're going to have to go over to the web and look for the connection per their manual. So I'm going to go over to the web browser for a second. And in the browser, as you can see, I'm on the SKR Pro version 1.1 for GitHub. But I'm going to go to the SKR Pro 1.2 because that's what we're working with and click on the manual. Inside the manual, we're not going to go into the manual directly, but we're going to go to the pins file this time. So this will display where the pins are, and we're looking for TFT, which is right over here. So we need to find the reset, and you'll see why in a second, because that's a separate connector. And then we have the other connectors for it right here. So now that we know where it is, let's go back over to the workbench and see if we can set this up. So I have the cable, and as you can see, we have the reset button, and then we have this. So I'm going to cling, connect that right down there, then do the reset. And for this example, I'm going to actually set it to USB power. So you can actually see this power up, and we're only going to work in that. So I'm going to move the jumper down here. But if you're using this jumper, remember if you're using steppers, it needs to be on this particular one, which is these two pins. And that's for the power supply unit. I'm setting it now to USB so that we can actually power it. So as you can see, it's powering up right now. Now it's not fully set up for this printer. We have an issue where it says no printer attached and that has to do with firmware so what i'm going to first show you is some of the things that you need to consider so i'm going to go to menu then i'm going to go to settings and then i'm going to go to connection then i'm going to go to baud rate and in this particular configuration i have it set to 250 uh, thousand bits per second so that matches the board and I matched that actually in the firmware load which you can find in another tutorial on how to load the firmware and that will be in this series. So I'm going to power the board down for a moment and I'm going to pop out the SD card to see if we can resolve this problem where we don't have the actual serial port connection working. So I'm going to use this Rocket Tech to load our card and by the way um, no one's paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial but I will place Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience so I'm going to place this in the computer and once it's in the computer I'm going to go over to VS Code and inside VS Code I'm actually going to load the Marlin firmware that I downloaded and then extract it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Explorer, then Open Folder, then I'm going to go to Downloads, Marlin 2.0, Marlin 2.0, so there's two of them, then Select Folder, 
inside here, what I need to do is click on the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Inside boards.h, I'm going to search on skr underscore pro, and I'm going to find our board and copy it. Then I'm going to close out of boards.h, minimize core and source, then I'm going to go to configuration.h, and inside configuration.h, I'm going to search on motherboard. Inside motherboard, for this, it's currently the ramps, so I'm going to paste over that. And then I'm going to change the serial port to negative 1. That's so we can commu communicate it over the USB, so the communication will work. But we also have to remove the comment over here. And we need to change negative 1 to 1. So now that we have that configured, we have to set up the default environment in platform I.O. .ini. So right now the default environment is the Mega 2560. So we need to find ours. So we're going to search on SKR underscore pro. And we're going to copy that environment. Then we're going to scroll back up and we're going to paste it over the Mega 2560. And before we actually build, we're going to click on the clean button. This will clean out what the default configuration in this case is, which is the Mega 2560. So let's click on that. Now that that's clean, We'll click on the checkbox to build, and sometimes this might fail the first time. If it does, hit the compile button or build button a second time. And if it happens a third time, that means that something at the very first broken portion of your build, it'll probably be in red, is broken. So fix that. Anything that happens after that is probably a cascade of errors from that. So this do, did build correctly. So let's click on the .pio folder again. And you can see right here, we now have Big Tree Tech SKR Pro. And then down inside the folder, we have firmware.bin. So let's right click on that and send it. Whoop, actually we have to reveal in File Explorer first. Once it's revealed in File Explorer, we're gonna right click and send it to our D drive. On our D drive, you can see there's a firmware.cur and there's a firmware.bin. The bin is a binary that will load, and after it completes loading, it'll be renamed to capital firmware.cur in all capital letters. So I'm going to go back to the desktop to load this. So I'm going to remove it from the computer. I'm then going to take out the drive place it in here, and then connect it. So as you can see, it's now loading, and the issue with unable to connect is now ready. So we're able to use this now. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe, and thank you for your time.